A blessed day to everyone. My name is Engineer Gilbert Novellero, and I'm very pleased to present the output of my research venture on real-time coconut fruit maturity detection. And this presentation is created in compliance to the requirements for the special topics and communication subjects. By the way, the topic which I have selected from the list of the new communication trends were the integration of artificial intelligence and drones. Now let me introduce my study entitled On Tree Coconut Fruit Maturity Detection based on deep learning using UAP images. Before we dive into the discussion proper, let me share with you the goals that we want to achieve at the end of this presentation. First is to share the background and the problems found from the synthesis of the related literatures. Second is to provide a primary purpose and novelty of the proposed real-time coconut detection system. Third is to discuss in detail the methodology implemented in materializing the model. Fourth is to report the results achieved after using the chosen deep learning algorithm. And finally, to provide a conclusion and future endeavors to improve the performance of the proposed system. Now let's begin our discussion with the background and the problem of the research. Philippines is the world's second largest coconut producing country, producing approximately 14.7 million tons next to Indonesia. Despite this huge production, coconut farmers are still using the traditional way or manual way of harvesting the coconut fruit, locally known as buko. Traditional harvesting is done by climbing the coconut tree or using a long pole with a carrot at the tip and cutting the fruits individually. These methods of coconut harvesting pose high risk of untoward incidents. In 2012, it was reported that a total of 35.5% or 78 cases out of 220 climbers fell down from coconut trees while doing their job. Image analysis, machine learning, and artificial intelligence are now playing major roles, especially in precision agriculture and smart farming. More importantly, they are incorporated with up training devices such as UAVs and robots to perform repetitive and hazardous tasks. One good example of these tasks is harvesting fruits from high fruit bearing trees like the coconut. To implement autonomous coconut harvesting, reaping robots and UAV must be provided with a machine vision to detect and classify the coconut fruits in real time. Due to the results of the previous studies regarding real-time detection algorithms, it was encouraging to use YOLO V5 as the backbone for the detection of the coconut fruits. Although previous works provided promising results in classifying the maturity of coconut fruits, their methods were not intended for an on-tree detection and classification. The missing capability in these works is the ability to detect the coconut fruits maturity in real time. Lastly, coconut was not part of the classes that the COCO dataset offers, hence there is a need to generate a custom data set specific to on-tree coconut detection and maturity classification. The next step of our presentation is the primary purpose and novelty of the research. The study's primary purpose is to create a machine vision for automatic detection of on-tree coconut fruits and their maturity in real time using a deep learning algorithm. Moreover, it envisions to gather training, validation, and testing images using a DJI Mini SE drone. Second, to generate a coconut fruit data set, which later can be shared online as an open source data set for coconut detection. And lastly, to implement YOLO V5 as the deep learning backbone to detect the on-tree coconut fruit maturity in real time. Heading on to our third stop where we will discuss in detail the research design and methodology. So here's the conceptual framework of the device. The input can be an image or a video contains, which contains coconut trees with fruits for detection and classification. The custom data set of coconut fruits from UAV images were used to train the YOLO V5 network for the identification and classification of the maturity of the coconut fruits in real time. The system's output is real-time detection of the, of the on-tree coconut fruits where it classifies each fruit based on its maturity. A DJI Mini SE was used to capture the coconut fruit images to build the custom data set. The DJI Mini SE is a lightweight drone attached to a 12 megapixels camera, having a resolution of 4000 by 2250 for still images in JPEG format. The video resolution of the drone is 2720 by 1530 in MP4 format. The coconut images were captured from coconut farms in Liban, Kamalikalbay, where the coconut trees are growing and almost, with almost similar heights. 
The location was ideal for taking pictures of multiple coconut trees, considering the capability of and the appropriateness of the distance of the UAV from obstructions like coconut branches, the leaves, and other nearby trees. I conducted the UAV flies on a sunny weather on multiple days from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. 250 UAV images were selected and partitioned for training and validation and testing. 70% or 174 images were used for training. 20% or 50 of the total images were used for validation. And 10% or 26 images were used to test the performance of the training model. The data set was administered through a RoboFlow application. It has the features to annotate the images, split the source images into three parts, and generate the code to be inputted to YOLO v5 custom training workspace in Google Colab. Let me discuss in detail the system's process flow. The first step is to capture the coconut images using the DJI Mini SD drone. Since typhoons hit the province when we arrived last April 3rd, we encountered several challenges in capturing images for our data set. The 250 images gathered were captured on different dates because of the heavy rains and drone flights were impossible. Images were downloaded from the drone memory and scrubbed, finalized, and saved to a folder on a computer. The next step is to upload the training images to RoboFlow, which is an open source online labeling tool. This is where the desired coconut classes and the annotations were set up to serve as the ground truths. The setting of the annotation and finalization of the data set is the most tedious part of building the model. From my estimate, I spent almost four days to make sure images were labeled accordingly. After completing the annotations, the data set was finalized by splitting the images into three parts. The annotated versions can be exported as .yaml file or code. And since the selected method requires the code, the YOLO v5 PyTorch code was exported and secured. The next step is to open YOLO v5 in Google Colab. Click Connect and run the setup code. This would initialize the PyTorch and import the YOLO v5 utilities and resources. This stage is where you would know what GPU was provided to you. By that time I ran the complete set data set, we were given the Tesla K80 GPU. The provided GPU may vary and you may notice in this video, which is the second time we run the setup code, Tesla T4 is the new GPU that was allocated to us. The next step is to locate and alter the initial data stored in the COCO file by pasting the code, the code generated from RoboFlow. Running the code will start the training, Download and unzip the dataset and extract the annotations and features set up for the custom coconut dataset in RoboFlow. Epochs are the number of complete passes through the training dataset, and the number of epochs can be set to an integer between 1 to infinity. On the other hand, the batch size is the number of examples utilized in one iteration. The batch size must be less than or equal to the number of samples in our training dataset. In our case, the selected batch size was 16 and the number of epochs was 150. Selected batch size and epoch combination resulted in an acceptable mean average precision or MAP. Finally, an image and a video were inputted to test the performance of the trained model, and the results of the test images can be found at the bottom of the page under display inference on all test images section. Results were extracted and downloaded for review and analysis. The study made use of several equations to compute the overall or the MAP of the YOLO V5 model. Intersection over union or IOU is a measure that evaluates the overlap between two bounding boxes. The overlapping areas between the predicted bounding box and the ground truth bounding box divided by the area of the union between two to two parameters. Precision measures the percentage of the correct predictions. Recall measures how good a model is in finding all the positives. The average precision or AP is a, a way to summarize the precision recall curve into a single value to represent all the precisions. In simple words, AP is the weighted sum of precisions at each threshold where the volume corresponds to an increase in recall. And finally, getting the mean of the average precision, we can get the overall accuracy of the model or the MAP. So we're done with the methods. Now we'll move on to the presentation of the results and findings. 26 images and two video clips were allocated to test the model's performance. This map slide shows the actual result of the testing of the several coconut fruit images. The model's performance represented by the MAP was fair at 64% for the allocated test set. Detecting on tree coconut fruits and classifying their maturity was challenging for humans, even more using machine vision. 
Several findings were obtained from the generated data set of RoboFlow and the training and validation performance of YOLO V5 for the custom data set. The class balance was off since the acquired premature coconut count was kept of the captured images was 4,370. On the other hand, the count of the mature coconut was underrepresented with only 218. The system's training and validation results for the generated custom data set are presented in this slide. It displays the basic parameters such as the precision, recall, losses, and MAP. Notice that the MAP of 0.5 value was at 64%, and the MAP of the premature and mature coconut fruits were at 82.8% and 45.2% respectively. The training time for the said data set was completed after 18.2 minutes. So the last stop of our discussion is the presentation of the conclusions and recommendations for future enhancements of the system. First, the DJI Mini SE drone performed well in capturing and generating high resolution images. However, this model of the DJI does not have a collision detection and avoidance feature, making it tricky to safely navigate through the long branches and leaves of the coconut tree without damaging your device. Other DJI models can be explored to test their navigation capabilities and features, enabling quick and easy capture of coconut images. Secondly, the total images captured by the UAV were low compared to the common data sets with higher resulting MAPs. The mature coconut fruit class count was underrepresented in only 5% of the premature fruit class. The extracted count of the coconut fruits per class was obtained from the 250 images for training, validation, and testing. The obtained premature coconut class has outnumbered the mature class due to the weather disturbance that hit the chosen location in Kamalipadbay. The mature coconut fruits have already fallen off the ground by the time I have started capturing the coconut images. This was the primary reason why the resulting MAP of the model was slightly low. The custom data set can be improved by gathering more images that contain almost the same number of on-tree premature and mature coconut fruits. This can be implemented through proper timing of capturing the images during coconut harvest season at the selected locations. And lastly, the study proved that YOLO V5 does great in detecting on-tree coconut fruits and classifying their maturity while maintaining its accuracy for a fair number of training and validation images. From the performance review of the model using the test images and video clips, the detection was still decent, showing precise detection of coconut fruits that were not obstructed by unwanted objects like the branches and the leaves. So before I end the presentation, let me show you a quick video clip of the real-time detection output. so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed and learned something from my presentation. I am now ending this video and please stay safe everyone. Goodbye.